so trusting that the what's most attractive and most most exciting about you and your ability to attract a partner is the joy within you, is the spark of light within you. It's the inspiration inside you. And when you commit to that joy, then the universe will deliver. Gabrielle Bernstein, a role model for spiritual seekers. Gabby on fire, we're back. Gabby here. Gabby, I don't really know if I like the, I don't, guys, I don't think I like Gabby on fire. Maybe we call it like rapid fire Gabby or the speed of Gabby. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just, we're, we're toying with this new concept, people, where we, come on, and this is me and Joshua and Alyssa. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> All right, we got Alyssa, we got Josh here. We are at the speed of Gabby. Some rapid fire Q&As that we pulled from the reviews. A lot of you are out there leaving us reviews and we ask you sometimes to leave questions. And so we've got some review questions that came in and we're going to answer them today. Here we go. Josh, you want to start? So we had someone write in and ask, do signs have a timeline, which I thought was very interesting. I really love that question. What a great question. So first of all, this person is talking about asking the universe for a sign. So if you have something that you want some spiritual support on, maybe you're waiting for something to happen in your life or you're wondering if it's the right relationship or if you're you know, on the right track with the project that you're pursuing, you can say, universe, thank you for revealing to me X sign, you know, a butterfly, a blue butterfly, a pair of red shoes, whatever you choose, whatever you're idea of your sign might be and asking the universe to reveal it to you. Sometimes it's effective to give the universe a timeline. Within the next 24 hours, show me my sign. Because if you're kind of eager, <laughs> you can get that information quicker. And so typically, if you don't get your sign right away, that's a sign. And I think it's pretty swift and fast how the universe works and the universe delivers good information quickly. But we... Uh, may not see that sign. Maybe that sign doesn't show up right away and that's the sign. Okay, it's not right now. But then in three months, you start to notice your sign, recognize that the universe is now delivering you a new message. But I would say if you want to know something soon, ask the universe for a sign and give it a timeline within the next 24 hours or by bedtime tonight or whatever it is. Be clear with your request because the more clear you are, the clearer the responses you will get. Boom. I keep doing all the work. I'm doing all the things. I'm meditating. I'm praying, doing everything, but nothing's changing. Mm. Okay. What do I do? I love it. Okay. So I'm meditating. I'm praying. I'm doing everything, but nothing's changing. Dear Gabby, help. I got you. I get that one. It's a big one. Well, it sounds like there's a little bit of manic manifesting happening, a little bit of really pushing and trying to make something happen. And if you've heard me talk about what it takes to manifest, it actually takes a lot more spiritually aligned action. And so I actually, first I'm going to say, go back and listen to the episode on spiritually aligned action, the whole method, or go to Super Attractor and read that chapter in the book, all about taking spiritually aligned action. But the message here really is, is that whenever you notice yourself pushing in any area, even your spiritual practice, take a beat. And recognize that anything that we do with force or pushing or in a way that's controlling, we're actually blocking. We're in the way. We're bleeding from a place of lack, a feeling of lack, a feeling of insecurity, a feeling of neediness, thirstiness, pushing. That's not a sexy energy and the universe doesn't respond to it. So stop everything. Stop everything. Take a break. Breathe, enjoy a meal, taste your food, have a fun conversation with a friend. Sometimes we can use our spiritual practice as another form of controlling. And we have to really be aware of that because it's actually quite the opposite effect that we want it to have. We're using it in a form of controlling and so we're blocking what it is that we desire because we're pushing, controlling, manipulating, manic manifesting. So the answer is stop. Take a break. Have an ice cream. 
Have a tea, have a coffee. Do nothing and let the universe show you what to do. Once you've had some time doing nothing and you want to take a next step, go listen to the episode on spiritually aligned action because that is for those manic manifestors out there. It's an episode that teaches you my method. It shares with you exactly the steps that you need to take to really take action from a place of spiritual alignment, to manifest from a place of spiritual alignment, and to do less and attract more. Boom. There's your answer. Let's take Nicole's favorite requested question. Yeah, I think it's so good. Do you want to read it, Josh? Uh, you want me to read it? Yep, that? I got it. Um, how to find happiness as a 38-year-old female who's single? I have no joy in my life, and I'm so lonely. Hmm. Well, as a 43-year-old woman, I'd like to acknowledge how young that 38-year-old woman is. <laughs> and, you know, we have these perceptions that we place upon ourselves that I'm so old. And so let's just address, let's address that first, right? Or I'm, I'm, I'm single and I'm 38. Well, my love, there's always a time for love to come into your life and to trust and know that there's a plan better than yours and that that partner may just be preparing for you as you energetically prepare for them. The lack of joy in your life may also be a deterrent to attracting the partner. So sometimes we think, when I have that partner, I'll feel happy and good enough and whole. But it's quite the opposite. We have to establish that joy and that happiness and that wholeness first for ourselves. In my book, Spirit Junkie, I wrote a chapter called Spirit Became My Boyfriend. And in a period of my life when I was single, I just became so in love with my spiritual practice. And I felt so aligned and connected to my meditation and my prayers and my synchronicities that I was experiencing all throughout my life and just the joy that it brought me to go to, to recovery meetings and to be in group meditations and yoga classes. And that joy of just heightening my spiritual connection made me really sexy. It really was an energy that was just so vibrant and so alive. And so trusting that the, what's most attractive and most, most exciting about you in your ability to attract a partner is the joy within you, is the spark of light within you. It's the inspiration inside you. And when you commit to that joy, then the universe will deliver. And you clear space to be seen. Your partner might be out there but they can't see you because you're stuck, because you're vibrating at a frequency that isn't attracting them. So make your energy your priority. Focus on the good stuff. You're halfway there. You're listening to Dear Gabby. You got a lot of books that you could follow, Super Attractor, The Universe Has Your Back, two in particular that would really put you into that place of alignment and positive flow. And I really believe that when you focus on your energy first, then you can clear space for the universe to deliver. When you're feeling stuck, how do you show the universe you're ready for change? Oh, Alyssa, what a good one. This is so good. I love the theme of this episode. So good. When you're feeling stuck, how do you send a message to the universe that you're ready to change? There we go. Well, press play on a podcast like Dear Gabby. Open a book like Super Attractor or any other spiritual or personal growth book. Pick up the phone and call that therapist. Get your ass into that yoga studio. Sit your butt down in that meditation pillow. These are the messages to the universe that we are ready to change by taking the most subtle action towards our growth by just pressing play and listening today. If you're listening to this episode, you have sent a huge message to the universe that you are a yes for change. Your desire is what is being picked up. Your interest, your curiosity, the actions that you take are being reflected back to you. So like I said, being here right now, listening to the end of this episode, bam, you are hooking it up. The universe is listening. You are listening. When you attune your attention, your focus, and your energy and your actions towards growth 
towards spiritual alignment, towards therapeutic healing, physical, somatic healing. When you do that, when you change your diet, when you change your sleeping patterns, when you start to speak up for yourself, whatever action you take backed by the desire to change is a message to the universe that you're ready to change. So send those messages loud and clear by just continuing to show up for yourself in whatever form that resonates with you, whether it's going to therapy, whether it's coming here, whether it's reading one of my books or anyone else's book that's in this field. That's the message to the universe that you're ready to change. A big one would be opening the book, The Universe Has Your Back. (laughs) Just open the book, read the first page. That's a big message to the universe that you're ready to change and transform your fear into faith. Well, go ahead, Josh. Next question. How to trust the universe when you feel you just keep getting knocked down and knocked down? Oh, okay. This is a great one to close with. I get knocked down and I get up again because the universe has my back. Okay, that was so funny and cheesy and I'm laughing at myself and I can only see our millennial social media Nicole in the background just being like, oh God, Gabby, shut the f*** up. (laughs) Okay, here we are. Nicole, I promise you I'm cool. All right. (laughs) The universe has your back even when you get knocked down. So how do you get knocked down, get back up again and trust that you're being guided by the universe? The answer is simple. You're down, right? You get knocked down. You're already down. (laughs) Say a prayer. Get back into alignment. When we get knocked down, those are the moments. That's usually the catalyst. The bottoms that we hit in our life are the openings for our greatest potential and our greatest spiritual connection. Whenever someone says, oh, I just hit bottom and now I'm getting sober. Congratulations. I hit bottom and I'm getting a divorce. Congratulations. Those moments where we just hit bottom are oftentimes the moments when we're ready to actually make change. So instead of looking at that being knocked down as a bad thing, I want you to look at it and say, thank you, universe, for guiding me towards what is of the highest and best. Thank you for guiding me towards change. So when you're down and you are literally on your knees, Thank you, universe, for guiding me towards what's of the highest and best for all. And that prayer opens the door. It opens up a line of communication for you to start to be the witness of what the universe has in store for you. Every time you try to judge that moment where you got knocked down or you judge yourself for hitting a bottom of any kind, you're missing the miracle. You're missing the opportunity. There's a thin veil of connection between our humanness and the universal energy when we're in our darkest moments. The veil is much thinner because we're more surrendered. We've let go. We've been humbled. So ride the wave of that momentum and lift the veil by opening your heart to what's possible. Thank you, universe, for revealing to me what is of the highest and best for all. See your moments of being knocked down as the catalyst for your greatest spiritual connection. Boom. We are complete on this episode. This was a beautiful roundup of questions. Thank you, team. Excellent roundup of questions. I think this might be one of our best episodes ever. I think we should just name this one the best episode ever. Yeah, I really like this one, guys. I really loved it. And I I think that the message in this episode is that there is a universal support system that's within us and around us, guiding us and protecting us. And that when we start to desire that and we open our heart to it, then we're going to be guided to an episode like this or a book like The Universe Has Your Back will fall off the shelf or you're going to be introduced to a new path that opens your heart more. The desire is enough to ignite your connection to the universe. Your desire to change, your desire to manifest, your desire to heal is enough to crack you open to what's possible. If you want more support in connecting to the universe, I have two free guided meditations that you can access, manifesting meditations that can be really supportive for you. And you can get them at deargabby.com forward slash free meditations. Those meditations can really, really support you as you start to open your heart to what's possible and the connections to the universe. 
So give yourself that opportunity now after listening to this episode to really take in what was shared here, to take in the ideas that you don't have to look at your bottoming out, your getting knocked down as a bad thing, but instead as a catalyst for great change. And that when you focus on energy and joy, that you tell the universe a message, I'm ready to receive. And to further guide you, both of the books, Super Tractor, The Universe Has Your Back, both of those books are excellent resources to really tap into this ever-present energy of love that is within you and around you. It is the energy of the universe supporting you and guiding you every step of the way. Just listening to this episode today is a huge statement to the universe that you are a yes to grow, that you're a yes for more, that you're here to be showing up for the world and yourself in your highest and best. Congratulations. You made it to the end. Love you guys. If you like this video and you want to get more Gabby, check out the next one right over here.